Hi and welcome to the second section of this Next.js course. Since we want to make more complex applications, we want to be able to store our data inside of a database. In this tutorial, we will see what Prisma is and how it can help us to save the data inside of the SQL database and we can see how we can set it up for our projects. Code with Sloba. First of all, let's understand what Prisma is in the first place. Essentially, this is just a toolkit, so a set of tools that helps you to easily access database. Apart from that, it auto-generates APIs, which makes database operations much, much easier and much more secure. In this tutorial, we will be using two packages. The first one is Prisma, which is a standalone component that sits on top of your database. And the second one is Prisma Client, which is a library that connects Prisma to a server and lets you easily read, write, and update your database. So now when you understand what Prisma is and you know what we will need for this tutorial, let's see how we can set it up for our project. Before installing any of the packages, I highly suggest you to go and install Prisma extension. This is the one that I'm using and it can help you with the code completion, formatting, highlighting and other things. So let's close this and now let's install the packages that we will need for our Prisma setup. So here in the terminal, let's install the first package, npm install Prisma and we can save it to the dev, dash dash save dash dev. Click enter and we have successfully installed the first package. So let's install the second one. So here I'm going to type in npm install at Prisma for slash client and just click enter. And the second package has been successfully installed. Now what we can do is let's clear the console and now we can initialize our Prisma so how we can do that is just running the command mpx prisma init and click enter. And with this, we have successfully initialized our prisma. So let's see what we got generated inside of our repository. I will close the terminal. And as you can see, we have this new env file inside of our repository. So here, basically what we have, we have this database URL and this string we're going to replace with our database file. Apart from that, we got this Prisma folder and inside of this Prisma folder we have this schema.prisma file. The first thing that we have inside of this file is this Prisma client provider. You're not going to be changing this one as we're going to be using Prisma client JS. The second thing is data source for database. Provider we're going to change this to SQLite. For URL we're using environment file and using database URL variable. This is something that we're going to update in a second. So let's go and update our env file. So instead of using this postgres, let's remove this entire string and let's enter the file URL of our database file. This file yet doesn't exist, but we're going to create that in a second. So the file location is going to be file in the current directory and the name of the file is going to be dev.db. Now we can save this file, but we can see that we have one issue. This file is being tracked by git, which we don't want because it can expose private information to our Git repository. So what we can do is we can go to the Git ignore and add this file to the ignore section. So let's go to the env local here and let's just add .env like so. Now let's save this and let's see. Now this file is not being tracked anymore. With this, we have completed with the Prisma setup for our project. Although one problem may arise during our development because we are using a hot reload Every time that we reload our application, it's going to create new connection to a database and it's going to create new client instance of the Prisma. This could lead to exhausting the Prisma resources. So what we can do is we can implement a fix from Prisma documentation about Next.js implementation. So let's create a new folder inside of the root directory and let's name this one as utils. Inside of this folder, let's create a new file and let's name it as db.ts. So inside of this file, we're going to be implementing the logic for fixing hot reload issue. So let me close the file explorer here. So now let's head over to the Prisma documentation and I'm just going to copy this entire file and let me explain you line by line what happens here. So I'm just going to paste this in here and let's go to see what happens here. So first we're just importing Prisma client and here we create a new function which creates new Prisma client instance. So which creates essentially a single ton. Since we are using TypeScript, we are declaring global namespace. And inside of this namespace, we have this var Prisma global, which essentially is going to hold this Prisma client singleton. In the next line, we are checking if this Prisma global exists from this global this. And if it doesn't, we are calling this function, 
which we defined previously to create new instance of Prisma client. And we are storing this inside of this new variable, which is called Prisma. And then we are just exporting this Prisma variable. On the next line, we are checking if we are not running in production. So this fix is only for development mode. And we are storing this Prisma newly created instance inside of this global list Prisma global variable. So the next time we reload our application, it is going to check if this global Prisma global exists and it's going to exist in this case. So it's not going to run new instance of Prisma client singleton. And now we can save this file, but let's not forget to update schema.prisma. So instead of using this Postgres SQL, we will remove this one. And if you're using Prisma Visual Studio Code extension, you will get suggestions of Prisma providers. So we're going to be using this SQLite provider. So now we can save this. And with this, we have completed our Prisma setup. And this is all for this tutorial. In the following ones, we will see how we can generate API endpoints and how we can store information inside of our databases. See you in the next one. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.